Hi kids, hi everyone. In today's episode of Kids Yoga, we'll be focusing on the spinal column, on the spine. Now the spine is a very interesting structure of the body. It's very important. It's comprised of 33 bones. There's 33 bones stuck on top of one another, creating a column. That's why we call it the spinal column. And this column allows us to stand up straight. This structure is responsible for our ability to stand up, to have a good posture. It allows the body to twist, to bend, and to do all those kind of things. Um, it's important to have strong muscles and strong ligaments, healthy ligaments and tendons to hold on to the, the bones. Uh, that whole thing allows our whole body to, to be healthy. So um, today we will be focusing on the spine, on the ability and the capacity of the spine to do different things. And we'll be seeing how yoga is a tool for us to keep our muscles strong, our bones strong, so that our spine can be healthy. You don't want to have any injuries uh, or any um, um, illnesses, anything that will compromise the, the health of your spine because that will really cause pain and discomfort. And that's why it's important to, to stay healthy. Uh, as I was saying last week, eat well, sleep well, and do your exercise, your physical exercise, as well as any mindfulness practices that keeps you mentally healthy because that also will affect how you feel and it will affect your body your energy very well so looking at the side from the side there's actually uh, four curves with the spine at the top you can see there's this curve here this is the cervical spine here at our neck then we have the thoracic spine then we have the lumbar spine and then we have the sacral spine so these are four curves the, the spine is not a straight column it's actually four curves it's like a wave and it's important to be aware of those curves so that in the practice you know how to use your upper body your torso in a healthy way and how to neutralize some curves, how to lengthen your spine. It will make more sense as we practice. So I would like you to find your tabletop position, your pony position. Bring your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. From here, what you want to do is just at first close your eyes and with a neutral spine, lengthening your whole body. Feel what's happening with your spine. Remember that there's a curve with the neck. That's a curve that's going down and coming back up. That's your cervical spine. Then there's the curve with the upper back. That curve is going the other way, so it's going up and then back down, up and then back down. That's the thoracic spine. Then we have the lumbar spine, the lower back, where the curve is going down and then back up, down and up. And then finally, we have the sacrum, where the, the curve is going back up and down. So there's these four waves in the spine. First we go down, then we go up, then we go down again, and then we go up again. When we talk about a neutral spine, it's not a straight line, but it's those four curves, those four waves. When we talk about a straight back, keep your straight, keep your back straight, then we just mean that we want to stay as long as possible, keep our body long and with full integrity, respecting all of the curves of the spine. 
Now we'll start playing with those curves. We'll start with the sacrum. The sacrum is a triangular bone at the bottom of the spine. And at the bottom of the sacrum, there's what we call the tailbone. It's like a little tail that's created with bones at the bottom of this structure of the spine. When we curve the tailbone down, there's this effect of turning our pelvis down and forward. And then when we uncurl the tailbone, so think of the tailbone as a, as a tail, just like a dog has a tail, and think that it's curled in. Then when we uncurl the tailbone and we send it back and up, then we are finding this tilt of the pelvis, turning the, the pubic bone, the bottom, the, at the front of the pelvis, down and to the back. Don't worry so much about the terminology, just feel what's happening with the body when you curl the tailbone, the bottom of the spine, in, and then when you uncurl it back. You can think of it as a dog, a dog with its tail. When you curl the tailbone down, it's like a sad dog, and when you uncurl it back and up, it's a happy dog. So focus on that movement at first. Keep the rest of your body relaxed and just curl the tailbone under, imagine a sad dog bringing its tail in between its legs and then uncurl it back and up just like a happy dog, sending its tail back and up, happy. We'll do it two more times. Feel how it's just the pelvis that's tilting, the rest of the body is steady and strong. And we'll do it one more time. So curl the tailbone under, the bottom of the spine comes down towards the ground and then uncurl it, send it back and up. Good. This movement will help you have more awareness of your pelvis to keep the lower back healthy. Now focusing on our lower back, the lumbar spine. Try to start involving the, the, the lower back more. So curl the tailbone under and Feel the rounding of the lower back. Round the lower back and then uncurl the tailbone back and up and find an arch in the lower back. Good. Okay, one more time. So bring the tailbone under and feel how you're lengthening the lower back and then uncurl the tailbone and feel how there's more arch now in the lower back. Now remember, the lower back is the lumbar curve. The lumbar curve is already in this direction. It's moving down, moving down and then going back up at the sacrum, which moves back down again. So when we're doing this curve, where we're back bending with the lower back, we're just emphasizing its natural curve. It's already in this curve. We call it lordosis, where we're bringing the, the where the curve is turning towards the ground and back up. And when we add more back bend there, we're adding more to its natural curve. When we round the back, then that curve just neutralizes. So feel how the natural curve is just emphasized and then how it's neutralized. And then we'll go to the upper back our thoracic spine. Our thoracic spine is already curving up, so it's already round when it's neutral. When I round my whole back, then I'm just adding more to that curve, and when I uncurl the tailbone and I start arching, what I do is I try to neutralize, lengthen this. So instead of it pointing up, it's back to neutral, back to a straight line, I mean and then you find its natural curve as you curl the tailbone down, and then you emphasize the curve, and then uncurl the tailbone and lengthen it. One more time, tailbone under, round the lower back, and round the upper back, and tailbone up, arch the lower back, and arch the upper back. Finally, the cervical spine, our neck. So curl the tailbone under 
round the lower back, round the upper back, and bring the chin in. When I bring the chin in, see how the natural curve of the neck is being neutralized. I'm bringing the chin in and I'm finding an arch where there was, well, I'm finding a rounding position where there was an arch. And then when I add curl, and I start arching the whole back, the neutral neck, which is already in this curve, it just gets even more profound, a bigger curve there. Okay, one more time, start with the pelvis, tailbone under, lower back, middle back, and upper back, and then the neck. From here, push forward with the hands, push back with the knees, arch the, well, around the whole body. So feel how the whole body is now in this fold. And then uncurl. Start with the tailbone, the lower back, going up to the upper back. And then bringing the chin up, finding a, an arch back. Pull back with the hands, push forward with the knees, arch your whole back. And then release. It takes some getting used to, but let's come to a child's pose just to relax. And then we'll play some more. Very good. Now I want you to come to uh, a kneeling position. So you sit on your heels and you'll uh, find that neutral spine. Now remember, neutral just means that we're respecting the natural curves of the spine. There's already this natural curve at the neck, then the opposite curve at the thorax, at the chest, the upper back, and then there's a natural curve in at the lumbar, the lower back, and a natural curve out to the pelvis where the sacrum is with the tailbone tacking under. We want to bring our arms up and then from here we'll start arching and rounding again. So it's the same action we were doing before in the pony position but now from a kneeling position feel how you can arch and round your whole spine. And then we'll want to isolate. We want to uh, be specific with the different parts of the body. So try to stay neutral and try to just move the pelvis. So feel how we're curling the tailbone in and I'm curling it back. Curling it in and curling it back. One more time. Good. So now we're really uh, finding the lumbar spine. As we move the pelvis, feel how the lower back is being changed, is being moved. Back and forward, and back and forward. Do it two more times, try it. Try to just focus on the lower back. And then we'll move with the upper back. So pull the belly in, strong abdominals. <sighs> strong belly and we'll focus with the upper back. Now from here, we'll bring the elbows back as we push the chest forward, and we'll bring the arms forward as we bring the upper back back. So forward and back. Remember, strong belly, this does not move, just the upper back. Forward and back, and forward and back. One more time, good. And then we bring the arms up, and we'll focus on what's happening with the uh, neck. So, neck up and down, neck up and down, up and down, good. We'll now bring the uh, awareness to our neck and our upper back. We'll look up and then we'll pull the elbows down and then we'll bring the chin down and we'll round the upper back. So chin up, open the upper back, chin down, close. Three more times, up and down, and up 
and down and keep the belly strong just the upper back and down. good job bring your hands to your shoulders and now we'll try to do thoracic movements just the chest moving we'll add a twist this time so it will get even more complicated so from here strong body pull your shoulders down and bring the elbows in flex yourself forward then twist pull the belly in and start going back and then to the other side twist and come forward two more times side up and twist and forward and twist and back and twist and forward so notice if you were moving a lot with the back with the lower back and use your strength so that you focus on the chest moving and the upper back we'll now go the other way so first to the left now and then back and to the right and then forward and twist and back and to the side and forward strong belly side and back and twist and forward it relax let's do some of our practice now with all of this awareness with what's happening with the spine we'll come to our pony position and from pony we'll go to child's pose and then we'll come back to the pony position and then we'll come to child's pose good Come to the pony position and start using your breath. So breathe out and come back. Breathe in and come forward. Breathe out and come back. Breathe in and come forward. Let's start playing with the spine. Breathe out and come back. Round your upper back. And then breathe in and come forward and walk the hands forward. Find a cobra a snake position. Open up and push and breathe out and round and pull and come forward. Snake and breathe. Breathe out, round. Breathe in and open. Good. Breathe out. Bring your toes down and push to your dog position. And breathe in. Come forward. Bring the legs down. Come to a snake position. Two more times. Breathe out. Push away. Find a neutral spine. And then breathe in. Come forward. And come to a snake. Arch the back. Breathe out and push, dog position, and breathe in, come forward, come down, all the way, bring your legs together, snake position. So what's happening with snake is that we want to arch the whole back, we want to keep our legs strong, press the feet down, and then press your hands down, keep your elbows in, and start with the neck again. So with the cervical spine, bring the chin forward and up, find that curve, and then work with the elbows, pull the shoulders back, find a curve in the upper back, pull the belly in, lengthen the lower back, which is already in that curve, and breathe for three breaths. Breathing. And breathe out, come forward, find length, 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 and then come down. Breathe out, push with the hands, and come to your child's position. Breathe in, and come up, and sit down. We'll now do a twist. So you want to bring your right leg outside the left knee, and sit down. If you're not very comfortable, then you can straighten the left leg. It's up to you. You can be here or if you can sit down with the knee bent, be here. We will twist to the side of the leg that's bent. 
So my right knee is bent, I will twist to the right. Breathe in, find a long, long spine, and breathe out, start twisting with the spine. Remember how the spine is this structure of 33 bones, and that allows us to do these twists because those vertebrae, as we call them, those bones, they can uh, rotate within that vertical line, that vertical axis, and help us to twist. You can hug your leg or you can go outside and push with the elbow to twist more. Pull the shoulders back and down and bring your back arm down to support you. Breathe in and breathe out. Twist more, focusing on the middle back, the upper back twisting, so the thoracic opening. Pull the shoulders down and find a long neck and breathe out, twist a bit taller. Good, breathe in here and breathe out, come back. We will switch legs. You can do a little dance. So you can bring your hands down, press the feet down, keep them where they are, keep the feet where they are and walk around, walk around, walk around to come down on the other side. So now my other leg is on top, foot to the outside. My knee is bent, but if I cannot sit comfortably, then I can straighten the bottom leg. Make sure that you can sit on your glutes, and then if you want to bend, make sure that you're still sitting there. Keep your belly strong. Remember, strong muscles support your spine, and reach up, bring your hands to high, and twist towards the bent knee to towards your leg. Pick up the chest, you can have the left hand on the ground to support you. Remember that we want the lower back to be strong. So keep your muscles there engaged and focus on the thoracic opening to the side and twisting. Pull the shoulders back, the shoulders down and reach up through the head. And you can also twist with the neck. Look back. If you want to have the arm outside, that's an option. What matters is for you to be mindful, like always. Be present and breathe. Breathe in, find length, and breathe out, twist. Two more times, breathe in, and breathe out. Twist, but stay strong, stay tall. One more time, breathe in, and breathe out. Breathe in, and come back to center. And let's do the dance on the other side. Hands down and walk around and come down. Good job. Okay, we'll bring the feet together in this butterfly position. If possible, we'll bring the feet closer. Otherwise, keep them as far as you need to. You want to feel supported. Remember how we were working with hips? So keep sending your pelvis back so that you open up the chest. We will do a lateral stretch from here. So we will hold on to the feet with the left arm, pick up the chest and reach up with the right arm. I want to reach up with the right and laterally stretch to the left. Keep the shoulders back so that the chest is proud and feel how the whole side is long. Keep your hand on the ground, inhale, and breathe out, reach away, relax the head. Two more times, breathe in, and breathe out. Imagine how the spine is still respecting those curves, and it's just tilting to one side, allowing the side body to stretch. And breathe out, reach away through the fingers, a strong straight arm as you stay grounded with your bottom. Pull the belly in and breathe in and come up and bring the hand down. So it's very important when we're moving to keep that length, that integrity. Breathe in and bring the left arm up now. Imagine the spine. The spine is first in this axis, this line, and then I'm using my muscles to reach away towards the other side, which means that the whole spine is now tilted for you to stretch your whole side. Relax the head, 
Breathe in, keep the top arm straight and reach away and breathe out. Keep grounding down so that you feel strong. Keep your belly strong so that you support your lower back. Breathe in and reach away and breathe out. Stretch a bit more. Pull the belly in and breathe in. Come back to center and breathe out. Bring the hands down. Good. Now we'll do an extension of the spine. So if you're not comfortable with the legs like this, cross the legs. Cross the legs in your monkey position. Otherwise, stay with the butterfly position. What we want is just to feel that every part of the spine, from being a curve, remember that there's four curves, under, lower back, middle back, and the well, upper back, and then the neck. So here, here, there's this curve that's going forward. Then here, there's the curve that's going back. Here in the lower back, it's going forward. And here at the bottom, as you can see, it's going back, back, forward, back, and forward. In the extension of the spine, we want to lengthen all of those curves. And when you pull the curves away, what's happening is that you find a straight line. So that's the idea that you want. From a wave, you want to pull that wave and lengthen it into a straight line. So ground down through your sit bones. The sit bones are the bony parts at the bottom of the pelvis. If you bring your hands under your uh, seat, you can feel a bone there and a bone on the other side. So ground down through those bones, send them down and reach up through the back of your head. Keep your whole spine long. Relax the head, reach up and reach up. Think of your sacrum reaching up. Think of your lower back straightening up. Think of the upper back straightening up, but keep your shoulders back and down as you reach up through the upper back and reach up through the head. Think of the neck even lengthening. Breathe in here and breathe out. This exercise, just sitting up tall, is one of the most important exercises. So remember to sit straight when you're working, when you're doing your homework, when you're typing on the computer. Sit up straight. This will really keep you strong and will also make sure that you stay tall your whole life. Because the more that you keep up, the more that you're suppressing, compressing the spine and you end up being shorter. That's why a lot of the times we see that as people go grow older, they grow shorter. That's why it's important for us to stay strong, to stay um, physically active, do our exercises so our body can support ourselves and we can stay tall. So keep reaching up through the back of the head as you're reaching down through the sit bones. Remember, this is the exercise you can do whenever you're doing your homework, whenever you're sitting on a chair. And this is also the exercise you can do when you're standing up, just pressing down into the feet and reaching up through the back of the head, remembering to keep the belly slightly engaged so that you have the support in the lower back, reaching up through the chest and keeping your shoulders back and down as you reach up through the head. Now we'll go for a forward fold. So we'll, we have already backbended with our snake pose. We have done a twist. We have done a lateral stretch. And now the spine can also fold forward, of course. So pull the belly in, keep that length first, and keep that length as you start moving forward. Your legs can stay in butterfly or cross-legged. Just feel what's happening. So ground through the sit bones. Pull the belly in, the ribs in. Reach forward and round the back. Remember, the lower back is now trying to lengthen. The upper back is trying to lengthen. The neck is trying to lengthen. And what we're doing is that we're, we're neutralizing the curve of the lower back. We're adding a, a bit more roundedness to our upper back. And we're also neutralizing our neck, lengthening through the neck. Maybe you bring the forehead to the ground. Maybe you stay with the head higher. Breathe in here. 
and breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in and breathe out through the mouth. Breathe three more times and notice how this is feeling. How does this feel? When you're ready to come up, remember to activate your belly, strong belly to support your spine and then lengthen to the front and then up slowly, slowly, keeping the spine long, not compressing, not collapsing anywhere. Use your hands to bring the legs together and then we'll come to lie back. And lying on our back, we'll keep the feet on the ground and we'll bring the knees together. The feet are apart and the knees come together. Bring your hands to your belly, close your eyes. And again, feel what's happening with your body on the ground. Feel the natural curves of the spine. Your sacrum is touching the ground. So as the tailbone is now tucked under like a sad dog, you can feel that that part of the spine, the bottom curve is pushing down onto the ground. Then the lower back, that part of the spine, the lumbar spine is already in a curve, a natural curl up, which means that if you take your hand, then you can slightly Put your hand under the lower back because there's a curve there. And then the upper back is curving the other way. So if you place your hand there, you cannot really press. Whereas with the lower back, it's, easily, it's easier to slide something under. Maybe not your hand, but if you had a ruler, then it's easy to slide it under because it is in that curve. The upper back is in the opposite curve, so you cannot slide anything under. And the neck is in the same curve as the lower back, which means that you can place something under the neck. Keep your chin slightly in so that the neck is long. Relax your face, relax your muscles, and stay completely still for Shavasana, for our relaxation. Imagine that your breath is traveling from the bottom of the spine, from the tailbone, all the way up to the top of the spine, to the top of the neck. Breathe out and feel how the breath goes down the wave to the tailbone and breathe in, feel the uh, breath following the curves up to the top of the neck. Breathe out, down the spine in that natural wave and breathe in, up the spine in that same way. Keep your body relaxed and keep breathing up and down the spine. Completely still. Just feel how it feels to breathe. Long, deep breaths. Breathing in, up the spine towards the top of the neck. Breathing out down the spine to the tailbone. Relax and keep breathing up and down the spine.
whole body relax. Keep your eyes closed. Lift up the spine from the tailbone and that curve towards the ground to the lower back, curving up towards the ceiling. The upper back curving down towards the ground and the neck curving up towards the ceiling and then breathe out and go down that curve to the thoracic spine that's curving down and then the lumbar spine curving up and then the sacral spine breath curving down and one more time breathe in all the way up those four curves. And breathe out all the way down. Your next breath, start moving your fingers and your toes. Keep your eyes closed, but start moving your head from side to side. Move with very, very much caution, very slowly. You can bring the knees to your chest and hug your knees. As you wrap yourself close to your knees, feel how you're rounding the whole spine. And then you can bring the head back and rock from side to side to massage your back, massage your lower back, massage your middle back, bringing the knees closer to your chest, and massage your upper back, bringing the knees all the way to the chest. And then slowly come to one side and use your hands to come to a seated position, to your monkey position. Keep your eyes closed. There's no need to open the eyes. Keep the eyes closed, sit up tall. Breathe in from the tailbone all the way up. Open the mouth and breathe out really sad. Let's do three lion's breaths. So as you breathe in, you round the whole back, and then you breathe out, you arch the back and stick your tongue out, making a hissing sound. Two more times, feel the movement of the whole back, the spine. Last time, move with that weight. And then bring your hands to your chest, allow your head to bow down. Take a moment in stillness, noticing how much more control you have over your spine, now that you know some more things. Do you remember how many bones there are in that structure, in that column? Do you remember how many curves there are which way they're going. Do you remember the importance of the spine? Why we should keep it healthy and how we should keep it healthy? I encourage you after this class to take a moment to maybe look for the picture of a smile in an encyclopedia, in, online. Just see how the spine is and Remember what we learned today, looking at those bones, looking at the vertebrae, looking at that spine, that column, at its curves, and maybe looking at the muscles that support the spine and thinking how you can stay fit, how you can stay healthy with food and with exercise, with good sleep and with good people around you. Yoga is about a healthy life, a happy life. So make sure that you do it one day at a time. Every day you take care of your body. Every day you take care of your mental health, your mind. And you do things that keep you strong, healthy, and happy. Thank you very much. The health and the happiness in me honors and celebrates the health and the happiness in you. Namaste, I bow to you.